Hello, this is Dan from About That Life in Japan. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll talk about three things that I think are very important for you to buy when you're starting out with your 3D printing journey, especially with FDM. Welcome to my makerspace. Now I know there are some people out there with some amazing print farms, some really awesome setups. For me, this has been an amazing three year journey. So again, the purpose of this video is to talk about three things I think you must buy if you're starting out with 3D printing, especially FDM. And here you're looking at the first. These are filament dryers and these are the Sunlu S2, I believe. I started out with one and I ended up getting another because again, I had two machines. Different from resin printing, you need to keep your filaments in optimal condition. And these are, for me, essential. They dry your filaments out and they keep them, you know, from becoming wet with humidity. Now I know a lot of machines do a great job putting down the first layers, but still, to give yourself the best chance of getting a complete great print, these are essential. Now after getting these first two filament dryers, Sunlu came out with a Kickstarter. And this Kickstarter offered a four roll filament drying system. So I don't remember the exact price, but I picked this up off the Kickstarter and it has been very, very good as well. So now instead of having two separate power boxes, I've got one with all four rolls, or not all, but with four rolls in this one filament dryer box. So for me, I've got this filament box wire to go directly to the two at the top and the two at the bottom. So even though I have the MMU3 system, I'm still able to have a single filament from this box or as you can see at the top. All it takes is a couple of pushes in the settings and you can turn the MMU unit off or on. Here I've turned it on. It'll go through its little systems check and it's ready to go. Perfect. Now just having great filament come out of the extruder is not enough. These are the build sheets. Starting out, I initially only used Prusa build plates. These sheets were smooth and textured. I think I have a satin one and I don't remember the other, but it was also a pretty expensive one. But anyway, most of my prints for the first year or so, I only did on the smooth sheet. So as you can see, mine are fairly well used. Now it's really challenging or it used to be really challenging. And you can see, I still have quite a bit of glue residue that I often put on my bill sheets. Now, whether it's textured or as you can see on the other side of this, a carbon fiber style design, I always use glue. I think this is probably a machine or user preference. Yes, I can get good prints without using glue, but for the most part, a clean build sheet and great filament in good condition and a pretty well dialed in machine and you should have no issues. Now, many of the newer printers have all kinds of technology added in and it's so much easier to get a really smooth first layer. So like anything, a good foundation helps building something wonderful much, much easier. And these bill plates, these bill sheets are that. The third thing that I think everyone needs to buy is some type of monitoring system. Now remember I started about three years ago and not every printer had a monitor. And yes, now many printers have some type of monitoring or camera system. But this was not the norm 
when I started. So for me, as you're looking at, these are the wise cameras. My makerspace was in another room. It's not really close to my main computer. And I needed something where I could, you know, kind of keep an eye on things when I'm not at home. So as you're looking here, I settled on this wise system. I'm not promoting any manufacturer. I'm pretty sure there are others out there, but this has a pretty easy to use app and it's, you know, it works. I mean, I can observe the print. I can do time lapses. I can turn it off and on. And these pan cameras, actually, you can, you know, spin them around and have the camera go up and down. And they do have pretty good low light, you know, camera capabilities. Now these two at the top are the newer pan cameras. Like I mentioned, they spin all the way around. And the ones at the bottom, which I you just saw on the desk, I did buy some new ones. I just haven't <laughs> installed them yet. But the ones on the bottom are the older style. I've been using these cameras for, yes, about three years, almost three years now. And they haven't failed me yet. Easy to use, connect them to your Wi-Fi, throw in a couple of micro SD cards, and you're good to go. There's nothing worse than coming home to a ruined print and you know it's something that you could have stopped especially if you didn't have a good first layer so this camera system made it with a switch bot or some type of plug that you can turn off and on really helps save you a lot of headache true you still might have a ruined print but at least you don't come home to the glob of death where your extruder is just covered in plastic that is the worst here, this is a newer Creality K1 Max printer, and you can see the camera is installed from the factory. This is a completely different machine, Core XY printer, and it is pretty fast. It, this is essentially a turnkey system, so I mean, it, to me, it's almost like using a resin printer, but um, not quite as accurate in a sense as the Prusas, at least not for me. So I don't want anyone to think I'm a fanboy. I do enjoy using my Prusas, but as you can see, I do work with other manufacturers and you know, we'll see what comes along uh, later on. I do have some ideas on new machines I'd like to add. Thank you for watching the end. And as a bonus, there's one more thing that I really consider everyone have in your printing area. I know a lot of these printers are connected through Wi-Fi and you have some type of system where you don't need to actually physically plug in USBs and that's great. But for the Prusas, in order to upgrade the MMU3 system, you have to physically connect your unit to some type of computer, uh, PC or Mac. And so for me, having my spare old MacBook Air in this room, just for printing purposes, either to download a quick STL file or I see something on printables and I want to really quickly throw it on a disc and you know try it out in one of the printers. Um, same thing for the Creality as well. It's really nice having some type of portable machine that's physically located in the same room as your printing area. Um, also because as I mentioned to upgrade the firmware for the MMU3 you have to physically connect it to the computer or to some type of computer download the firmware and then it is going to install and upgrade the firmware um, so that's something that I don't think many people are aware of or if you are great but for me really useful having a small portable PC in your printing room in your makerspace um, yeah Thank you again for watching this far. Ultimately, 3D printing is a wonderful hobby. I mean, I can't imagine how many times I've printed out something that was totally useless, but the satisfaction of bringing something that was just a few moments ago, or a couple hours ago, on your computer, in your mind, and actually physically being able to hold it, it's just, uh, I don't wanna say it's like giving birth, but it's really a Frankenstein moment. It's creation at its best. And I'm really, really fortunate to have this space to be able to bring some of my quirky little ideas to life and actually make a little money from it because it's become more than a hobby now. That being said, I hope you're having fun. Keep printing, have fun. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thank you for watching this far and catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching. If you really enjoyed it, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see some more, please subscribe.